Ionic bonding. To fully understand this topic, you must watch the electron configuration video scribe, otherwise you won't understand what the diagrams are all about. So, when atoms of two or more elements react together, a compound is formed. If the atoms form chemical bonds by donating or receiving electrons, this is called ionic bonding, and it's generally between metals and non-metals. The metal atom donates its outer electrons to the non-metal, which receives the electrons into its outer shell. So why do they do this? Well, because they want to obtain the electron configuration of a noble gas. That's the thing that's driving this. All atoms want to obtain the same electron configuration as a noble gas, and that's basically why they react. So in this example, the lithium atom loses its outer electron to form a lithium ion with a positive charge. The reason why it's positive is because it still has three protons, and these are positively charged, don't forget. Uh, but now it only has two electrons, which are negatively charged. So the overall charge is plus one. I'll explain this a bit further. So if we have a look at the atom, this has got three protons, three electrons, so the overall charge is zero. When it donates its outer electron, then the ion that is formed, an ion is a, is a charged particle, the ion still got three protons because bonding is nothing to do with anything apart from the electron. So, so everything in the nucleus stays the same. So it's still got three protons, but now it's only got two electrons. So the overall charge is now plus one. If you have a look at the electron configuration of the ion, it's the same electron configuration as helium. The non-metal atoms gain electrons to become negatively charged ions. In this case, the fluorine atom has gained the electron from the lithium atom and now has become a fluoride ion. And the fluoride ion has the same electron configuration now as neon. So in this case, then, the fluorine atom has got nine protons and nine electrons and the overall charge is zero. But the fluorine ion has still got nine protons, but now it's got ten electrons. So the overall charge is minus one, because the electrons have a negative charge, and the fluorine atom has gained a negative particle, the electron, so it's become an overall charge of minus one. The group 1 metals react with non-metals to form ionic compounds in which the metal ion has a charge of plus 1. That's because they're in group 1, so they lose one electron, because they've got one electron in their outer shell that they must get rid of to get a noble gas configuration. The group 7 halogens react with metals to form ionic compounds in which the halide ions have a charge of minus 1. And again, that's because they're in group 7, they need to gain one electron to get an electron configuration the same as the noble gas. So therefore they end up with a charge of minus 1 because they've gained an electron. In this example of the ionic bonding between sodium chloride, I've shown just the outer shell electrons only, which is what you need to do for your exams. We don't worry about the inner electrons in the inner shells, we're only worried about the outer shell electrons. In this example, sodium has donated its outer electron to the chlorine atom, and we have the ionic compound sodium chloride. Ionic compounds are giant structures. They're held together by strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the oppositely charged ions. These electrostatic forces act in all directions in a giant three-dimensional lattice of positive and negative ions.
properties of ionic compounds. As the electrostatic forces of attraction between the oppositely charged ions is strong, it takes a large amount of energy to break the many strong ionic bonds which hold the giant lattice together. So ionic compounds have high melting points and boiling points. If the ions are free to move, they can carry the charge. Ionic compounds do not conduct electricity when solid, as the ions are fixed in the lattice and are not free to move. But if the ionic compound is molten or dissolved in water, the ions are free to move, so it conducts electricity. Here's some examples of ionic bonding. Magnesium oxide. Note this time the magnesium has two electrons in its outer shell that it would like to get rid of. Oxygen has six electrons in its outer shell and so needs two more to get a full outer shell. When you're drawing the ions, make sure you place the correct charges on the ions. The magnesium has donated two electrons, so it becomes plus two and the oxygen has received two electrons, so it becomes minus two. Note that the compounds have no overall charge. It's plus two and minus two equals zero. In the next example of potassium oxide, you can now start to understand why the formula of potassium oxide is K2O. Oxygen needs two electrons, but potassium has only got one electron to give away. So in this example, we need two potassiums for every one oxygen, because the oxygen needs two electrons. Again, the charges all add up to zero because the compounds have no overall charge. In the example of calcium chloride, this time we need two chlorine atoms for one calcium because calcium's got two electrons to give away, but each chlorine atom only needs one. So calcium needs to react with two chlorine atoms in order to lose both of its electrons. In this case, the calcium ion has a charge of two plus and the chloride ions again have a charge of minus one. To gain good marks in an exam in this topic, you've got to draw square brackets around the ions, put the right charges on the ions, so the metal ions are positively charged and the non-metal ions are negatively charged, and then do the correct dot and cross diagram. This concludes this topic on ionic bonding. Thank you for watching.